Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you how to make this Lumigurumi lemonade design, which was designed by Hyman Looms on Instagram. I feel like I have to start this tutorial off with a little bit of an apology because at the end of the succulent tutorial I recently posted, I gave a little like sneak peek to designs that were coming and I said his name was Jamie instead of Jaime. Um, that's totally my bad. I just, I completely read your name all wrong and I'm so sorry about that, but thank you for still trusting me to do these tutorials. I, I, yeah, I just, I just messed up. So, sorry about that and his name is actually Jaime, but he made this lemonade design which I think is so cute. Um, it's a very easy design which I kind of like. I feel like sometimes I overcomplicate my designs, so. I just love this simple little glass of lemonade and I love the straw. The straw is so cute. But yeah. Also, I already have bands on my finger, I just realized this, um, because I filmed this intro four times and my memory card has given me errors twice and I don't know why. But we're gonna look at Jaime's account real quick. So this is his account um, on Instagram. If you have Instagram, you should definitely go follow him. I think you can also see how I thought it said Jamie, I don't know. I'm dyslexic and I, I saw the M, I saw an I, I saw a J and I was like, that says Jamie, when in reality it says Jaime. Um, but yeah, here's his account, it's really cool. He makes a lot of really cute rain balloon posts, so if you're into rain balloon, you should definitely go follow him and check him out. But yeah, he makes a lot of my designs actually, which is pretty cute. Some dinosaurs. This cow family. I haven't liked or commented on any of these because I'm really behind on liking posts, but he makes a lot of really cool rain balloon posts and you should definitely check him out. And I'm actually going to be making another tutorial for him very soon. He also designed this little coconut. And yeah. But yeah, he's a great loomer, great designer, and you should definitely check him out. Anyways, back to the lemonade. So, if you want to make this lemonade, I think it's fairly easy. I don't think it's a very complicated design, and it's really cute, so, yeah. Um, of course, you're going to need some bands for this design. Today, I'm going to be doing pink lemonade, as you can tell by the pink bands that are already on my finger. So, I'm going to be doing, like, a pink lemonade. This was actually my sibling's idea. She was like, you should make a pink lemonade, and I was like, I will. So I'm going to be doing like a pink lemonade, but pretty much the colors are the same as this guy. Except for instead of the yellow, I'm going to be using pink. I'm still going to be using clear for the top. And then for the straw, I'm going to be doing white and yellow. Um, you do need eyes if you want to do eyes on this guy. I'm going to be using beads again today, but if you don't have beads, you could use safety eyes. Or you could just get a black band and wrap it around your hook um, four times and it'll work the same way. And you also need bands for the cheeks if you want to do cheeks. I'm using my double-ended hook today. You don't need a double-ended hook. You can use a crochet hook, a rain balloon hook, um, a plastic hook, whatever you have. I just really like this hook, so I'm going to be using my double-ended hook today. You also need a C-clip or something to mark your rows with. If you don't have a C-clip, you can use an S-clip, a G-clip, a paper clip. I don't know, just something to mark where you start and end. It can be anything. It can even be a band. Um, and Oh, and the very last thing you need is you're just going to need some stuffing to stuff this guy. I'm going to be using these cotton balls I found on my desk. So I think that's pretty much it. Um, band count, pattern, all that is down in the description below if you need it. Um, I don't think this guy's very band heavy at all, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. But if you need it, band count and the pattern are in the description. So we are going to get started. Yeah, I really don't know why my memory card gave me two errors. I Both times I was like starting to get into like looming and like showing the steps and all that. And then my memory card, like, it would just give me a memory card error, and then it wouldn't save what I filmed. So I was like, oh no. But I'm hoping, I'm hoping this time it works. My camera's done this before, I don't know why it does it. And then it just doesn't do it for a while, so I don't know what's up. Technology. So weird. <laughs> Anyways, we're gonna get started. And I know I already said this a bunch, but patterns in the description if you want to follow along. So we're going to start with a tripled cat band with eight stitches in it. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So we'll start by wrapping a band um, three times around our hook. So we have one, two, and we'll wrap it one more time, three. Just like that. Then we're going to take a band, pull it through the whole cat band, put both ends back on our hook, and then we're going to push the back one over the front one. We're going to go back into the cat band. Make sure you go through the whole cat band. We're going to pull a band through just the cat band, so not the last loop. We're going to put both ends back on our hook. 
We're gonna push this back loop over the front loop. And then we're gonna push this loop we left on our hook over as well, like that. So we're gonna wanna repeat this thing we just did um, six more times. So we have eight stitches in the cat band in total. I'll show you again. So we'll go into the cat band, pull a band through just the cat band, put both ends on your hook, push this back loop over the front loop, and then put, push this loop from last time over as well. And we're just going to keep doing that until we have eight stitches in the cat band. I also don't know if you guys can hear it, but I hear my family's dog. Her name is Midnight. Um, crying. I don't know why she's crying. But I don't, I'm like, I'm not worried about it because my family is home. So that'll take care of it if there's a reason why she's crying. But sometimes she just cries. But yeah, we're still just doing stitches in the cat band until we have eight loops. I think we're at like six loops right now but we're just doing the same thing we did before and if you're confused on what I'm doing I always recommend watching what I do and then doing it yourself sometimes that helps than just listening to me also always remember you can pause rewind fast forward the video if you need to because um, I do go a little fast sometimes how many loops are we at oh I need one more stitch okay So once you have eight stitches in your cat band, you're gonna to wanna to count to make sure you have eight. So you'll start by counting the one on your hook. So you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Like that. So now we're gonna go into this first loop here. And we're gonna pull a band through just this loop. Put both ends back on our hook. And then just like before, we'll push the back one over the front one. And then we'll push the loop from last time over as well. And we're going to put our C-clip on this loop. So we'll just get our C-clip and put it on. So that's the end of the first bit. Um, for the next bit, we're going to be increasing everything. So at the end of this row, we should be at 16 loops. And we're just going to be doing increases all the way around. Okay. So. This is one. So, uh, thoughts. Anyways, um. So there's already one stitch in this first loop here, but because we're doing increases, we need two stitches in this loop. So we're going to go ahead and just go back into this first loop and then just do another stitch like that. So that's an increase and I'll show you again because it's usually a little bit confusing on the first one, but all an increase is, is you're just going to go into the loop, you're going to do one stitch, then you'll go back in, make another stitch. So there's two stitches in that loop. And then that'll be an increase. And we're just going to keep doing this all the way around. So I'll show you again. So we're going to go in. We're going to do one stitch. Go back in to the same loop. And do another stitch. And then that will be our increase. And because we're increasing everything, we're doing this on every single loop. So we're just putting two stitches per loop. You know, I'm like trying to like really remind myself right now, like go slow. I don't know why I feel like I'm going fast, but I think it's because I've already like, I don't know, in my brain, I filmed this bit like three times already. So I'm like, we already did this, but like you guys didn't see those other three times. So we didn't already do this. Anyways, we're just putting two stitches in each loop. And I need more bands. And then once you get to the C-clip, you're just going to do a stitch on the one that has a C-clip on it. And then you're going to take the C-clip off of the loop it's on and move it up onto the loop that is on your hook. Like that. So now if we count around, we should be at, eight, uh, I was about to say 18, but 16 loops. So we should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So that's it for that step. So for the next step, we're going to do a row of single stitches, so just a row normal, 
but we're gonna only grab the inner half of each loop um, so it's kind of like a half row is what I usually call these because we're only grabbing like half a band um, and actually we were supposed to do that on this first loop and I forgot so let's just undo this first stitch here because that's my bad so just undo the stitch that has a c-clip on it and then I'll show you what we're doing for this row but for this row we're doing single stitches so we're just doing one stitch in every loop but instead of going through the full loop you're only going to go through this first inner half part and then you'll make a stitch just like before and this I undid the one that had my c-clip on it so I'm going to go ahead and put the c-clip back on but that's what we're doing all the way around this row so I'll show you again in the next loop instead of going through the whole loop you go through just the inner part and then you just make a single stitch and we just do this all the way around so we're only going through the inner part of each loop and we're doing one row normal so just one row of single stitches all the way around so we're just doing one stitch per loop but we're only grabbing the inner part of each loop I'm trying to make sure you guys can see what I'm doing And at the end of this row, we should still be at 16 loops. Okay. And once again, once you get to the C-clip, you're just going to go, well, okay. When you get to the C-clip, you're going to go through both loops again. And then you'll just make a single stitch on the one that has a C-clip on it. And you'll move it up, so you'll take it off the loop it's on, and move it up onto the loop that is on your hook. So now if we count around, we should once again be at 16 loops. So we should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. There should be 16. 1, 2, 3. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. There's 16. I just couldn't count. So now is where it's going to get a bit repetitive. We're going to do four rows of single stitches or just four rows normal. Um, at the end of these rows, you should still be at 16 loops. And it's kind of just like what we did before, but instead of only going through the inner half of the whole loop, inner half of the loop, we're going through the whole loop now. And we're going to do that for four rows. So I'm going to stay on camera. I'm going to do two rows with you, and then I'm going to go off camera and do the other two. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I'm like saving my tutorial in little chunks in case we have another, um, what do you call it? SD card error, because I don't want to have to refilm all that. <laughs> I, I don't know why my SD card does that. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, I'm like paranoid now that I'm like, it's going to have an error and it's not going to save. And I'm going to be like, have to redo the whole thing, which would be sad. Anyways, so like I said, we're doing four rows of single stitches, and it's just the same as before. So we're doing four rows normal, but the only thing we're doing different in this row than before is we're going through both loops again. So we're just doing one stitch per loop, and just make sure you're going through both loops. And we just do this all the way around for four rows. So we just do one stitch per loop. And it's pretty simple. It's literally the same as last row, we're just going through both loops now, so I'm not explaining a whole ton. And at the end of each of these rows, you should still be at 16 loops. And then once again, once you get to the C-clip, you'll just make a stitch on the one that has a C-clip on it. And you'll move it up. 
and that was one row of single stitches. So like I said, we have to do three more rows like this. Um, I'll do one more row on camera with you and then I'll go off to do the other two. And by the way, because I haven't shown you in a bit, this is what your lemonade should be looking like right now. And yeah. So we're just going to go ahead and continue doing the rows of single stitches. So this will be row two. And we're still just doing one stitch per loop all the way around. I was trying to think if there was any like funny stories I could tell you while we do this last row. But honestly, everything's been pretty chill ever since I got out of school. I feel like the most interesting thing that me and my sibling have been doing um, since I got home is she got a smoothie maker for her birthday. Because um, her birthday was like, I think it was like the week after I got home. And my grandma gave her a smoothie maker because when we were, she came to visit me during the school year. Um to come see some art exhibition I had going on. And we went and got smoothies and my sister, this is like important detail to story, she can't have any dairy. So when she's discovered that smoothies have no dairy, which I mean, it's, I don't know. My sister just had never had a smoothie. So we went and got smoothies and she said it was life changing for her. So then for her birthday, my grandma got her a smoothie maker. So we've been making smoothies, which is really good. They've been pretty good. Smoothies are good, but yeah, that's pretty much all I've been doing. I've been just doing a lot of looming since I got out of school and I've been filming a ton and just hanging with my sister. We're also like my family. We are gathering things to do a garage sale. So I'm excited about that too. I don't know why my family, we've never done a garage sale, but like I've always wanted to do a garage sale, which feels ridiculous because garage sales are like just kind of boring, but I don't know. I've just always wanted to do one. So yeah, we're doing one next weekend and I'm excited. But anyways, I just finished with the second row. So it should be looking something like this. And we have to do two more rows, but like I mentioned, I'm going to go off camera. I'm going to do the two rows and then I'm going to come back and I'll show you what to do next. But yeah, it's just the same thing we've been doing for two more rows. Okay, so after you do the four rows, your lemonade guy should be looking a little something like this. So I don't know why it's light so bright suddenly. Um... Should be looking a little something like this. And that is pretty much it for this color. So we're going to switch to our clear now. And we're going to do more rows of just single stitches. But we need to do it in clear. So we have like the glass bit. So we're going to go ahead and switch over to clear. So you're going to want to get your clear bands. Okay, and because we're switching colors, um, I went ahead and just did the last stitch on the C-clip because I figured most of you, if you did, were following all the tutorial, probably didn't switch colors here as well. But we want to switch colors on this stitch, so we're going to go ahead and undo this this last stitch we did with the C-clip on it. We're going to just undo it. And we're going to redo it, but we're going to redo it with clear, and because we're flipping colors, we're going to be slip stitching. So we're going to go ahead and pull this band through everything on our hook. Put both ends back on our hook, and then push the back one over the front one. And that was just so we can flip colors a little more clean. Also, we want to make sure we're still at 16 loops after those four rows, so we're going to go ahead and count around now. So we'll start by counting the one on our hook. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do another row of single stitches. Um, we're just going to do it with clear now. But we're doing the same thing. We're just putting one stitch per loop. And at the end of this row, we should still be at 16 stitches. So while I was doing the, the two rows, I'm going to just go ahead and talk while we do this row because it'll be real quick. But I was thinking, because I don't know if all lemons are ready at this time of year, but... We actually have a lemon tree in our backyard and it grows lemons. It actually didn't grow lemons for like most of my childhood, but then randomly in like 2017, it started giving lemons and it's so weird because like we pick, like we pick all the lemons off in like December, which is, I don't know, like you associate lemons with like summertime, but then I don't know if it's just our lemon trees a little weird, 
but like the lemons are just never ready until like December. So then we have like a bunch of lemonade around Christmas time, which is kind of interesting. I mean, it's good, but I don't know. I was just thinking how like it's considered like a summertime thing, but then for some reason our weird lemon tree gives lemons in December. It probably has to do with like the climate and where we live and stuff, but I don't know. I just find it interesting. So we are going to do something a bit different after we finish this row, and I just finished this row, so I moved my C-clip up. If we count around, we should still be at 16 loops. Let's just go ahead and count real quick. So we should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I don't think I have 17, but why do I... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yeah, we have 16 loops. I just counted wrong. And I'm going to go ahead and just save this real quick. Okay, I just saved it just so I don't lose anything. I'm so paranoid about my SD card. But So we just finished our first row of um, single stitches. We have to do three rows like this. But we also need to make like the lemonade fill-in so we don't have this just like giant hole. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So like you can see here, we have like the lemonade on top. So we're just going to pull our hook out. And the C-clip should hold it. I wouldn't worry too much about it. And we're going to go back to our lemonade color. Which for me is pink. And I'm just going to pick a bunch of bands. But all we're going to do is we're just going to stitch around a row on the inside here. And... Yeah. So the place I like to grab to stitch around is on these clear bands. And we're just going to stitch around. And at, and uh, we're going to stitch around 16 times. There should be 16 loops because we have 16 loops if you go through each one of these parts of the clear band like I'm doing. I know it's kind of hard to see what I'm doing but I'm just going through all these weird clear bits and then making a stitch on them. And we're going to do this all the way around. And I'm trying my best to let you see what I'm doing, but it's a little hard because it's kind of on the inside. But we're just going to stitch around on the inside 16 times. I think the best place to grab, like I already mentioned a bunch, is on these clear stitches or like the bottom part of these clear stitches. And we're just stitching all the way around until we have 16. Almost there. I'm like so focused right now. <laughs> it always gets so hard to grab them right here at the end. I just gotta do two more stitches. Okay. So once you stitch it around, you should have 16 loops, and it should look a little something like this. It looks a little weird right now, but it fixes itself after this row, and after we finish closing up the inside. If you count around, you should be at 16 loops, so we'll count around real quick. So we go 1, well, we start with the one on our hook, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Like that. So right now we're going to want to stuff this guy really quick because after this we're just going to decrease till closed. But we're going to want to stuff this guy. So I'm going to go in through the first loop. I'm going to make a stitch and I'm going to put a C-clip on this one just to hold it while we stuff it really quickly. 
So just put a C-clip on it to hold it. Take your hook out and we're just gonna put some stuffing in. I'm really hoping I have enough stuffing. I just had random stuffing on my desk and I like, I know this is gonna sound lazy, but I don't wanna get up to get more. Mm. Just stuffing. Oh yeah, that was plenty of stuffing. Cool. That was also like, I think the fastest I've ever stuffed anything. So once you've stuffed him, you just go ahead and put your hook back in. At this point, you can take the C-clip out. And all we're going to do now is we're just going to decrease everything until it's closed. So every single stitch we do is going to be a decrease. And I'll show you how to decrease in a second. And we're just going to decrease until we can't decrease anymore. So to decrease, you're going to grab the inside part of one loop. And the back part of the next loop and make a stitch. I'm sorry I hear my family talking. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and just keep doing that. I'm sorry I keep doing this. I don't know what's happening. Um, I'm sorry I just heard him talking and it sounded like drama. I was like what is, what is going on? But I think, I don't know. Anyways, continuing decreasing. So that was one decrease. We're decreasing till close, so every stitch we do is gonna be a decrease, so we're gonna decrease again. Once again, you just grab the inside part of one loop, back part of the next part back part of the next loop, and just make a stitch. And we just keep doing that all the way around. So inside part of one loop, back part of the next loop, make a stitch. And we just keep doing this. And I know it's kinda of hard to see what I'm doing. I wish I could show you better, but we're kind of in a really awkward and tight spot, so this is just going to have to do. We're just decreasing every single stitch until we can't decrease anymore. I think I can do one more decrease. So once you have your final decrease up on your hook, eh, if I could grab it, you're just gonna pull a band through everything on your hook, push the back one over the front one and pull tight. And then we'll tuck this into our bottom of the lemonade. We'll just pull it down in. So now your lemonade should be looking a little something like this. And you can kind of push it down and then you can see that the the rim kind of comes back up. It just looks a little weird while we loom it. Yeah. So now we're just going to finish off this um, glass part, I guess, or just the top of the glass. We just have to do two more rows of single stitches and then we're pretty much done. So I'm going to stay on camera. I'm going to do the two rows with you. And we're going to finish up the lemonade design. I I don't know. I think this design is really cute. So I'm excited to see mine done. And I also kind of want to put some little like ice cubes up here just for fun. I'll, but I'll do that later. <laughs> just picking up a ton of clear bands. Okay. So we're going to go ahead. We'll put our hook back into this... Um, the band with a C-clip on it. And you know your hook's facing the right way if all the loops are kind of following the direction your hook is going, if that makes sense. So if my hook was going this way, you could see that the loops are kind of going against it. You want the loops to be going towards it. And we're just going to keep doing the what we've been doing, which is a lot of rows of single stitches. So we're going to do two more rows, normal, of single stitches. And then we're pretty much done. So once again, doing one, one stitch per loop. And at the end of each of these rows, we should still be at 16 loops. 
and I'm not gonna explain this a ton because we've done so many sing rows of single stitches I I feel like you guys probably got it you guys are probably like oh ginger you keep ex over explaining we know what we're doing but I just want to make sure everyone's on the same page <laughs> I don't know So, I heard my family go outside, but we've been taking walks with the dog. I've been posting, also if you want to see the dog I'm talking about, I've been posting her a lot of my story. Her name's Midnight. It's a new dog my family got when I left for school in the fall, so... I'm kind of still so mad about that because I never- I wasn't here during the cute puppy phase. When I got back, she was already like a big dog. Which is still cute, but like, I miss the cute puppy phase, you know? And... We've been going on walks with her, and she's so funny. Because she's afraid of literally everything. Like, yesterday it was kind of windy. And she was afraid of the wind. And I was like, I'm glad you're a big scary dog. Because, <laughs> I don't know, she's like a Labrador pit bull mix. So I feel like if you look at her, you think, oh, she's a big scary dog. And no, she's not. She's afraid of literally everything. And it's kind of funny. At least I think it's kind of funny. It's also funny because we'll be walking with her and like she looks back to make sure we all are there so she's like not really a guard dog either we're like her guard people to make sure she's okay and I just find that so funny it's cute but it's just so funny because you think I don't know I feel like pitbulls also as a breed just like get the thing that they're like oh my god they're a big scary dog and no this one isn't she's afraid of everything <laughs> also we've been going on walks and my mom has like one of those watches that like track how many miles you walk and we've been doing like two and a half miles and I'm so used to walking around because I walk everywhere at school and my school I didn't realize how big of a hill it's on but like where we walk around in my home hometown like there's a few hills and my mom will be like oh my god this is a hill and I'm like this is not a hill this is a sorry excuse for a hill my school has some serious hills and I didn't realize how like in shape I was I don't know I always have this idea in my head that I'm like not very fit but I've been going on walks with my family and like the walks feel like nothing because I'm so used to like walking to school with like my heavy backpack and then I have usually my medals kit because I do metal art and I walk it all up a hill like tw once a day and it's so heavy that I, I, I don't know I just never realized like I was technically in some ways like walking with weights but yeah. Also, I don't know why, I heard that my school, like the university I go to, was built on a hill on purpose and whoever decided that was a good idea was just evil because walking to school is such a pain because it's like you have to- I always joke that I climb to school, I don't walk to school because it's just- it's so steep. It's so bad. <laughs> but I have now finished with my second row of single stitches so your lemonade should be looking like this and once we get to the C-clip, we're gonna just tie this off so we're pretty much done. And once you get to the C-clip at the end of your second row, you just pull a band through everything. Push the back one over the front one and pull tight. And we are done with our lemonade. And we're just gonna tuck the tail through a few of these um, clear bands at the top so we don't have it sticking out all crazy. I'm just gonna go ahead and tuck it in. And then that's pretty much it for our glass of lemonade. At least the glass part. And if you count it around at the end of those two rows, you should still be at 16 loops. I'ma just trust in my looming that I didn't accidentally increase everywhere. Also, it looks pretty good, so I'm not like unhappy with it. But yeah. I feel like this design just ends so suddenly because you just tie it off and it's like, it's done. So yeah, so the very last things we're gonna do real quick is we're gonna do the face. I think we're gonna do the face very last. I'm gonna show you how to do the straw first. You're gonna want to get whatever colors you want for the straw. I'm gonna be using this glittery white and then some yellow. And I forgot to pull them out, so I'm gonna just pull them out really quickly. Okay. 
So we're gonna make the straw. So we'll set him aside for a second. And we are gonna start the straw with a trip, not a triple cap band, a cap band wrap four times. So we're gonna take a band, oh, focus. We're gonna take a band. My camera's not focused. Please focus. Okay. We're gonna take a band, uh, take a band, wrap it four times around our hooks. We have one, two, three, and four. So we have it wrapped four times. I don't know why I feel like my camera isn't focused. Hold up. There we go. So we have our first white band wrapped four times. Then you're gonna to want to take your second color, and we're pretty much just gonna alternate between doing the two colors, just like using them. So we take our second color. We're going to double it, and we're going to slide this cat band onto this doubled band. Put both ends back on our hook, like that. And we're going to chain up six doubled bands, basically, um, and we're just alternating between the colors we're using, so just between the white and the yellow. So I just use yellow, so my next chain will be white. So I'm going to double the band again, slide this on, and put both ends back on our hook, double a yellow band, slide it on, both ends back on our hook. Like I said, so we're chaining up seven times total, so this first one so we have our cat band, and then we should chain up seven times. So we are at one, two, three chains right now. So we need to chain up four more times, and then our straw will be done. But we're just doubling a band, sliding it on, both ends back on our hook. Double a band, slide it on, and then both ends back on our hook. Just do this two more times so we have seven chains of doubled bands, alternating colors so we can have like a fun colored straw. I guess you could also just do solid color, like one color if you wanted a solid color straw, but I wanted, I wanted mine to be fun colors. So if you lost track of how many chains you did, it's pretty easy to count. Um, we have our cat band, which is a different color than our first chain, so it's pretty easy to tell where the chain starts. So that's our cat band, then we have our first chain, and we should have chained up seven, so you can just start counting. So you have one, two, three four, five, six, seven. Now we're gonna take a band in the color of our lemonade. We're just gonna pull it through and then we're gonna use this band to tie it into our lemonade. And I think I'm gonna tie it, tie it right. I'm gonna tie it on this side this time. So we'll tie it over here. So you'll just pull this band through, put both ends back on your hook Push the back one over the front one and pull it tight. And then you'll just hide that tail. And then you'll have a straw. But the straw's gonna be sticking like straight up right now and we don't really want that. Because we want like a cute bendy straw. So the way you get it to bend is you're gonna stick your hook. Um, I'm gonna go with a couple chains down so you can see we have the cat band. This chain then this chain. I'm gonna stick my hook into this chain. And I'm just going to pull upward, and it should bend the straw. Like that. I also think I tied the straw in the wrong spot. So, actually, no, I didn't. Actually, it's fine. So you'll just bend your straw. So that's pretty much it for the lemonade, but I like putting a cute face on all my things, so I'm going to really quickly show you how to do the face. Okay, so you're going to want to get everything you need for the face. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the eyes first. So like I said, I'm using beads for eyes. Um, if you don't have beads, it's okay. You can take a black band, wrap it four times around your hook, and it'll work exactly the same as the beads do. You can also use safety eyes if you have safety eyes. Anyways, you're going to take a piece of floss. I usually use dental floss. I just think it works the best for this because it doesn't really fray. Ah! You're going to put your bead on the floss. And you'll take a band. And you want the band to be in the color of your lemonade. 
put it on this floss as well and then you're gonna fold over and go back through the bead and then you'll just slide this bead onto this band and then you'll have an eye we'll do this again for the other eye Oh no, don't tell me. Oh, I thought it snapped. I was like, no. But we're good. So once you have your two eye bands, you'll get your lemonade. And just decide on which side you want the face. I want my face on this side. And I'm gonna put an eye right here. I'll go ahead and pull it through. And grab the other end. And you're gonna want to pull it tight, but if you're using these glow-in-the-dark bands, I've noticed that if you pull them too tight, they tend to snap, so I pulled it tight, but I pulled it tight very gently. And then we'll go ahead and put the other eye, so this one's right here. I'm going to put the other eye right here. Also, I don't know if you noticed, but I turned my creation upside down. I just find that helpful sometimes when putting the eyes in. I also feel like I'm going to sneeze. No, I think we're good. Here we go. And then we'll just tuck the tails in. And the very last thing we need to do is the cheeks. So I have these pink sweet spans that I'm going to use for the cheeks. Also, I don't know why this guy's eyes looks like they're so far apart. But we'll get whatever color you want for your cheeks. You're going to come right under the eye or as close to possible under the eye. Pull a band through, put both ends back on your hook, push the back one over the front one, and you want to pull it tight but not too tight, and then you just hide the tail. And then it'll make a cheek. We'll go ahead and do that on the other side. Go right under the eye, pull a band through, pull it tight, push the back one over the front one and pull it tight but not too tight, and then just hide the tail. And there you go. You should have a glass of lemonade. So the very last thing we're missing is the mouth, and I never do the mouths on camera. I'm just convinced I'm gonna burn myself with a hot glue gun. But if you really wanna know the way I do the mouths, I have it in my How to Lumigurumi Basics video, the updated version. And basically what you do is you just take a hot glue gun, you get a black band. Well, okay, you need a hot glue gun, but you take a black band, you cut it into the shape of a mouth, and then you put a drop of hot glue on the face, you take your black band that you cut, and then you just place it on the hot glue, and that's pretty much it. But yeah. I really think it would be cute to add ice cubes to this guy, but I'm gonna do that later. Um, I think that is pretty much it for this tutorial. If you make one of these lemonades, don't forget to tag me and Jaime. Jaime is the designer, so tag him as well so you can see you making your, so he can see you making his design. Um, subscribe if you want to see more tutorials for me. I have more tutorials coming. We have this coconut we need to make a tutorial. I need to make a tutorial for at some point. Um, and yeah, I also have some other exciting things coming. My, uh, yearly loom summer contest might be coming soon too, so maybe it's a good idea to subscribe. Um, you can check me out on Instagram if you want to see what I'm up to on a daily basis. I've kind of just been posting what I do sometimes. And I post Rainbow Loom, I post my art, and I think my Instagram's fun. So you can check out my Instagram if you want to check out my Instagram. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. I feel like I was so kind of scatterbrained today. I don't know what's up with my brain. But I think that's it for this tutorial. Um, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.